The City University of New York, or CUNY, is the public university system of New York City and the largest urban university in the United States. It is home to 25 colleges and schools from community colleges and senior colleges to graduate and professional schools. The university has one of the most diverse student bodies in the United States, with students hailing from over 200 countries and speaking over 170 languages. My name is David Gruber. I'm a professor of biology here at Baruch College, City University of New York. I'm also an emerging explorer at National Geographic. My research here at CUNY involves studying bioluminescent and biofluorescent animals. Bioluminescent animals are animals that actually make their own light, like a firefly. And biofluorescent animals are animals that live primarily in the top 700 meters, and they live in this blue ocean environment. The ocean acts like a big filter, and it filters out all the other colors of sunlight except for blue. So when one is about 100 meters down, they're swimming in a just pure blue environment. And in that environment, many marine creatures have evolved compounds in their skin that absorbs the blue ocean light and emits out other colors. Studying science is exploring human curiosity about the world. And what's wonderful about CUNY is students come from all walks of life and they come here to CUNY and they've seen the world through different eyes. And my job as a professor is really to kind of just channel their curiosity into the standardized field of science so they could express themselves through the scientific medium. CUNY's goal is to maintain and expand its commitment to diversity through generating and delivering academic excellence and providing equal access and opportunity for students, faculty and staff from all genders, ethnicities, and racial groups. I'm Gilda Barabino, I'm Dean and Berg Professor at the Grove School of Engineering at the City College of New York. I work in the field of biomedical engineering and in my laboratory, we apply engineering technologies and principles to better understand disease and to develop new approaches for treatment. One of the diseases that we study is sickle cell disease. And sickle cell disease is a genetic blood disorder that is characterized by abnormalities in the red blood cells, where the red blood cells become stiffened. They don't pass through the circulation as easily and they can become trapped, blocking vessels, and causing in patients who have the disease what we call painful vasoclusive crisis. And in my laboratory, we've been studying the different impacts that happen to the patients because of the disease. And one area in particular that we've looked at is what happens to bone in patients with sickle cell disease. And we've used animal models recently to look at mechanical properties of bone and we found that the bone for sickle is much more fragile than normal and currently we're working on strategies so that we better understand the mechanisms that underlie the different uh, bone properties, the diminished bone properties and the next steps we would be working on is therapies to address that. In keeping with this culture of academic excellence and inclusion, CUNY has reaffirmed its focus on generating new knowledge and delivering high-impact training in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs. This continued focus at CUNY follows a decade of science between 2005 and 2015, which saw an extraordinary expansion of facilities, equipment, faculty and student recruitment, and retention in the STEM disciplines throughout the CUNY campuses. My name is Preeti Radhakrishnan. I am Associate Professor of Biology at LaGuardia Community College. So I am a behavioral ecologist, which means that I study insect mating systems. Insect mating systems are a great way to watch through a window the action of evolution over time. For example, the evolution of anti-aphrodisiac pheromones on, in butterflies and traumatic insemination in beetles. Both of these are great examples of the bizarre world of insects and how 
complex they can be. The impact of the Women in STEM program here at LaGuardia Community College has been pretty significant. Uh, for example, from 20, data from 2014 to 2017 shows us that there is a 30% increase in enrollment of female students here at LaGuardia Community College. That's pretty significant. In addition to that, um, the number of female students who have attached to a mentor here at LaGuardia to do cutting edge, cutting edge research with them has also increased significantly. At present, there are over 44,000 CUNY students engaged in STEM programs, which boast a diverse spread of 40% women, nearly 80% minorities, and with over 50% of that being immigrants or first-generation college students. The STEM faculty is equally diverse, with over 70% women and approximately 65% minorities. My name is Frida Kleiman and I'm a full professor at Hunter College. I've been a, a professor here for 14 years in the CUNY system. And if you are wondering where my accent is from, I'm from Argentina. The field I'm working in is uh, the role of mRNA proce processing in disease. Uh, you are wondering what is mRNA processing. So everybody knows what is DNA. DNA is a molecule that stores your information inside of the nucleus. But the DNA doesn't move and it doesn't do much. So the DNA has to be copied by small molecules that are known as RNA. And that's RNA bring the information as a role of a messenger. So we call it messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA is the one will make your proteins, it's going to make your lipids, it's going to make your cell work. Um, this is important because in many diseases or in many drug treatments, it's important to know how the cell changes, how the proteins are made, how the lipids are made. And that's not the DNA, in part it's the DNA because it stores the information, but it's the messenger who's going to react in real time to make the reaction. If you are exposed to UV light, your RNA is going to bring the information to say, well, we have to protect our DNA, we have to create new proteins to protect our cell, and to make it healthy. So the messenger RNA in real time is the one who will make the function that will protect your cell in different situations. The STEM education and our work at Hunter where we have um, access to people from different uh, backgrounds, people, first generation of immigrants, first generation of uh, people educated at college level, uh, the, the, the approach, the level of connection that you could have, and the input that you can have in this society is, is very important. So I think that's, um, that's uh, an, uh, an important aspect in society and something that has to be uh, addressed a little strongly in many programs. CUNY is home to diverse, cutting-edge medical, public health, and engineering schools, all based in West and Central Harlem neighborhoods. There are also a number of state-of-the-art scientific research facilities, such as Hunter College's own floor at the Belfer Research Building of the Well Cornell Medical College, the Graduate School's CUNY Advanced Science Research Center at the City College campus, and the High Speed Computing Center at the College of Staten Island. I am Mark Haber. I'm the University Vice Provost for Research and Professor of Animal Behavior at CUNY Central and at Hunter College. I have an NSF grant to work on the brains of brood parasitic birds. Brood parasites are different than other birds because they lay their eggs in different species' nests, and so the young bird is raised by a foster parent rather than its own parent. How their brains work differently from those of parental species is unknown, and so we use um, magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, to understand how parasitic brains work without having to decapitate the bird, which is an advantage because we study development and we want to be able to study the same individual again and again. My most important discovery at CUNY is that I can be successful with students. I can train them and work with them and co-author publications with them. Uh, and in turn, they can take those papers with them and become researchers on their own. Uh, I have published over 150 papers while I was a professor at Hunter College in peer-reviewed journals, and most of those were with my collaborators from around the world and with CUNY undergraduate, masters, and PhD students. CUNY students have gone on to winning Nobel Prizes in more than a dozen times. 
students from Hunter College, both women, have gone on to win chemistry and physiology Nobel Prizes, whereas the latest Nobel Prize winner just a couple years ago was a graduate of City College. Our faculty are members of the National Academy of Sciences, of the American Association for Advancement of Sciences, and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. They publish in prestigious journals such as Nature, Science, Nature Nanoscience, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and they win awards from National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation, just to name a few. STEM academic programs at CUNY are the heart of academic enterprises. Uh, they represent students um, who will go on to medical school, dental school, physical therapy, nursing, but also students who go on to PhD programs. And personally, I would like to be treated by a doctor who also understands animal behavior and evolutionary biology. So I find my role in teaching students about the diversity uh, and the ecological principles that surround us to be paramount, whether they become researchers or they become medical professionals. CUNY STEM programs are continually working to further develop an educational platform that provides equal access and opportunity for students, faculty, and staff from all genders, ethnicities, and racial groups. We're particularly interested and see it as our mission to broaden the participation of those who are typically underserved and maybe not having as many opportunities to pursue career paths in STEM. The STEM Institute allows us to reach a broader population and to support those students so that they are even more prepared when they join us to be successful in entering STEM career paths.